Hello YouTube, this is IDNO, and I'm bringing you another episode of Advanced Redstone Circuits. So, last week I showed you guys how to make a buffer, and this week, instead of doing a tutorial per se, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Um, but I've got my friend uh, Jazza Hat here, uh, if you want to go ahead and say hi. Hi. Alright, and what we're going to be doing is, over the next few episodes, building you guys, or building a uh, CPU for you. So you guys can see how they're built, what goes into them and get an idea of the architecture of what goes into those. So, um, this is actually going to be officially my second uh, CPU, but I'm pretty excited about it. So, um, anyway, I'll let Jazz explain exactly what we're doing with it. Um, he came, with, came to me with an idea, and I, I thought it was really cool, so um, go ahead and explain it. Okay, so we're going to attach some memory to the ALU, which is this big floaty thing here and we will give it lines so it can do operations all right so Perfect. you could you could what i really suck at this thing but um <laughs> basically it'll be twice as fast as our previous one which was pretty fast to begin with so um, this is the ALU that we're starting off with. Uh, you might recognize it as the one from my tutorial from before. <laughs> Jess. Bad Jess. Anyway. Um, that's not, that's not funny. Um, so anyway, the, uh, this the ALU is, it's, the CPU is going to be 8-bit, and, uh, it's got pretty much every opcode that we're going to need. Um, is this the shifting? Yes, that is Ooh. the right shift. Handy. I haven't covered this uh, for you guys, but basically what this does is it takes the output of the ALU, and uh, it takes it, it says, uh, you know, cut this off, send the data down this line instead. So it basically takes the data and write, or shifts the values over one. Um, yeah, it's actually, just uh, two-way marks. Yeah, it's it's really simple. So I'll show you guys exactly how that works right now, actually. Uh, so you know, normally that that value would go through there. I'm not going. Okay, and then if you turn this on, what happens is um, that's I don't know why I thought that was going to work. All right, it does this. So it basically, just sends the value down the you know the bus to the right. Um, you don't need to do two of them because, you know, to shift left, you would just do this. It's just A yeah. plus A, or 2A, or... So you get the point. Yeah. If you, add, if you add a number to itself, it shifts it to the left one. Um, very simple. So, anyway, um, let's go ahead and probably start laying out the architecture here. Um... So what goes into this is we're going to have two ALUs um, muxed together with logic controlling each of them, I believe. Is that right? Uh, you, do you want to do that? Or why is that how it works? I thought we'd just make a simple one. But... Oh, a simple one? Yeah, that's fine. We can do a simple one. Yeah, okay. So this is going to be a simple CPU. Um, faster than what we did before. Hopefully more efficient, too. Um, yeah. Okay. Um... Yeah. So we're gonna need a comparator. Let's throw it back here. Comparator. Do you to... um, yeah. You I can build remember how to build that. Sweet. Okay. So this is another thing that I haven't shown you guys, and I promise I will show you guys. Um, actually, we can use this as a tutorial on that one. Um, but what a comparator does is it looks at two values. It tells you if they're equal, if A is larger or B is larger. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah, that's that's what I thought. So, um, yeah, it just uh, tells you the state of the two different uh, values, or I guess the compared state. Anyway, I should be doing something too. While you're building this, um, did you want to use the uh, the same memory from before? Uh, how about use the three two by three? Oh, you don't want to do dual read? Oh. Uh, don't, uh, uh, 
Uh, yeah, okay, dual read, yeah. Well, I mean, it, uh, dual read's fine. Um, but we'd save space with the 3-1. But I don't know. I think that might be slower. Let's let's do, do the we'll we'll do the dual read. So this is um, a variation of the memory that I showed you guys the other day or a couple weeks ago. Um, except you can actually read two values at the same time, um, which is probably more than we need. But whatever. I don't even care. All right. Give me a moment while I build this, and I will be right back. All right, sorry about that. Um, all right, so while I was gone, um, I went ahead and finished up this RAM. Uh, you may see some similarities here with the storage cell. The uh, difference here, though, is that we've actually got two different lines that you can read from. So um, the major benefit here is that while we are basically processing information in our CPU, we'll actually be able to process twice as much data, really? Or not so much twice as much, but we'll be able to load two values with one instruction versus, you know, load this value, you know, save it into register B, load this value, save it in register C. Uh, just a moment. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, so you can load up two values with one register, or one instruction rather than doing it multiple times, which saves you time overall. Um, so I'll demonstrate this being used right here. Um, so let's save a 1, or a 0, sorry, this is a 0. And, no, it's a 1. Uh, it's a 1. Alright, so you'll notice if I... Let me get a lever. Lever, pulling levers. Alright, so we turn that off, that value goes through there. That's A, and this is B. So if we turn this off, goes through there. Now if we power this, okay, that works, and <laughs> set that value, then we go like this, that doesn't go through, and this one should do the same thing. So, so you can see it's a uh, really compact dual read RAM, but um, it's going to allow us to, to use a pretty decent amount of data. Um, the other thing that happened is that we had a design for a comparator and seemed to have lost half of it. So Jazz is in the process of actually redesigning that. Uh, so <laughs> hopefully we can get it back to the way we had it before because that was a really nice comparator. I enjoyed it because the last one... You know, actually, while you're doing this, let me show off our old one. So... So people get an idea of what we're making. Uh, go home. I pasted this in earlier today, actually. Um, okay. It's a lights out game. Made that yesterday. Got bored. Decided to make myself a game. Alright, so here it is. Um, it's not too big? I mean, it's kind of big, but it's not huge. Um, there are definitely, you know, CPUs that are bigger out there that are they do less than this one. Um, but you've got the memory over here, which is actually what I just built. You guys will recognize that. Um, I think we did 16 bytes of memory, dual read, and then our old comparators in here. It's the green wall. Um, that's what Jazz is building right now. Here is our old ALU, and you actually should be able to see it is. A little bit longer, significantly longer than our new one. Shorter, but longer. Um, and more importantly, slower. Uh, so it's the one we're putting in right now is going to be, I think, probably three or four ticks faster, which should help the overall speed of the CPU significantly. Um, up here is something I haven't shown you guys yet. This is a random number generator. And uh, basically what this does is when you've got a value, or when you need a value that's not pre-decided, like a random value, this will uh, throw it out for you. Um, let's go ahead and turn that on for a second. So that's going to do that. 
and you can see that it generated these two numbers right here, which then output to here and give us this real quick. Um, I will be right back. Alright, so, um, sorry about that guys. Uh, uh, basically, yeah, you can see the value right here being output. Um, it's, yeah, fairly reliable. You get a different value pretty consistently. Um, let's see. That's the same value. I don't know. It, it worked before, so <laughs> I'll be. I'm going to be designing a new one because I don't much care for the one that's in here now. It's small, but it's it does tend to do that sometimes. Uh, what else we got here? This down here is uh, actually these are specialized. Um, what are they called? Specialized serial encoders. Sorry. <laughs> Brain kind of crapped out on me. Um, but yeah, no, so we were going to have uh, serial output from the CPU to interface with. And uh, this was it, basically. This, you know, we had some, some memory latches going into the encoders, which you should recognize sort of here. Um, they're very similar to the ones that I showed you guys. Which, by the way, Jazz, you, d you designed those, right? Uh, sorry? The serial encoder? The really small uh, ones. Ah, uh, yes, probably. Yeah, yeah, it was him. Um, he's uh, very good at making small things, so it's it's pretty cool. Um, what else we got here? This is the shifter that we had on there um, that I showed you on the other one. We've got the encoders for the memory. Uh, this actually requires three. You know, one for the B read and one for the A read, and then also one for write. Um, this is program memory, and th this is used for is you've got opcodes that do specific things, like you know, write to specific locations, um, read from specific locations. Ah, uh, what else is there? There's branching down here. Uh, you know, jump lines here. Um, yeah, so we've got tons of opcodes here. <laughs> And then over here, this is our counter. Okay, so this is our counter and uh, clock. Um, it's got branching from the values in here. So you can actually say, um, I want this to branch after the 10th uh, iteration. So it'll branch to the um, whatever location that you're set to, to go to this. And uh, so you can get some pretty cool programs done with that. And if the value goes in here, and the second this thing, you know, this clock goes off, then it'll say, it'll basically reset and set it to whatever whatever value's in here. Um, so that's really cool. Um, this is basically the entirety of the CPU. All of this busing and the gray busing in here is just busing for control logic. Um, I mean, you really, these, these lines right here, you're able to input values directly, and... Uh, these ones right here will store in the memory. Um, so these are basically being input directly into the value or into the write line, um, or sorry, the read line. So it'll go straight into the ALU. Sorry, actually. Um, what else is there? I think that's pretty much it. Um, anyway, I mean this this is I like it, but I'm excited to see what our new one's going to turn out to be like because. Um, it should be overall significantly faster. Um, so, anyway, let's go back and check and see what he's done. Alright, sorry about that, guys. Um, <laughs> so we've tinkered with it, and I think, for the most part, this thing is done. Um, it's obviously not 8 bits, but this is our comparator. Uh, it's very fast. And uh, I will demonstrate it to you now. So, this top row of levers is the uh, A line, bottom row is the B line, and then our output is over here. We have three possible states, equals in the middle, off to the right you've got uh, A is larger, and to the left B is larger. So I'll show you right now. Uh, perfect, thank you, color coding. So put a value into A, A is larger, 
values are now equal. Okay. And B is now larger. There you go. So that shows how the comparator works. Um, well, you know, it, it shows that it works. It doesn't really show how it works. Um, I will do a tutorial on building this so you guys can see it. Um, I kind of want to brush up on it myself so I can actually give you guys the information properly. So um, probably expect that in a few weeks or so. Um, anyway, this video is is running very, very long. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut it short. I know that we don't have a lot of stuff built here right now, but we actually do have quite a bit done right now. Um, we've got the ALU, the memory, and the comparator. All that's really left is to kind of lay out stuff and build some other components, then bus everything together. So, um, Yay, busing is going to be the, the fun part. part. Yeah, the busing is probably the worst part of everything, of any job that you'll ever see. So, um, yeah, uh, we're probably going to work on it a little bit before the next video, so things are not going to be exactly like this when you guys come back, but luckily that'll just show you guys, you know, what kind of progress we'll make. Um, but I want to thank you for watching. If you guys like the video, subscribe or comment. Um, if you'd like to see more of Jazz and his work, go ahead and let me know. Uh, I'll see if I can convince him to do some stuff. But, um, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. You... Yeah. Anything you want to say? Uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>